the the name of the movie is Bardo, and you find out if you look it up that Bardo is a it's a Buddhist idea of someone being stuck between two worlds, between life and death, between this world and the next world. You're not sure what's real, what's not real. It's not a reflection of a reality. It's more a reality of a fear, of a feeling, of a nightmare. At the very beginning of the film, you know, he's on a train and he, he spills a bag full of water with some, I can't remember if they were guppies, what the, exactly they were, they weren't fish, but he spills it and the next thing you know, the entire train is like a foot of water and he's on the floor of the, the train, you know, sort of wading through this water. What, what is this? What does this mean? And it comes clear at the end and it's obvious that he's having a stroke. It clicked and everything made sense to me. And I thought, okay, now I understand the movie. At the end of the film, he's laying in his hospital bed and the news report is playing on the TV in the room. He's seeing a news report about a man who's collapsed on a train. And that man turns out to be him. So what he's hearing on that TV is now being incorporated into what's in his head and what's in his dream. And it's things that he's also overhearing while he's in a coma. A mixture of real things and dreamlike things that are in his in his mind and that's what you're seeing through the entire film which this whole idea of bardo which is like a limbo right you're in between two worlds you're between life and death everything that he's seeing are moments of his real life that he's remembering in this state between two worlds the idea for me was that this should be more than a nightmare it was a metaphysical feeling Ya, levántate, Silverio. The main character is uh, a guy named Silverio Gama, and he's sort of a version of Enrito himself. You can see that he's kind of examining his own place as a filmmaker, because in the movie, Silverio is a documentary filmmaker who's from Mexico City, who's gone to America, gone to Los Angeles to make documentaries and lived in that world. The, the film explores all kinds of different things like politics and, and, and national pride. Viva Mexico, cabrones! Ah! You know, he's from Mexico City. He is a Mexican. And he's proud of that. But he's gone on to the United States to live in Los Angeles where he raises a family because he's become a successful documentary filmmaker. And so he's also between two worlds in that sense as well, right? He's a man with two countries. And he he's having arguments. He has an argument with his son. His son basically calls him a hypocrite, you know, because he's he's critical of Mexico in some ways, but he loves it. You know, he's critical of the politics, but then as his former partner says on the show, you know, you've made all this money, you know, after being this critic of capitalism, now you, you know, or maybe it was the other way around. He was a, he was making money on capitalism and then now he's an artist and he's criticizing it and, and the hypocrisy of that. This idea of being, you know, in love with your country, but being critical of it at the same time. You know, there's a conversation he has with, I think, a cab driver where he says, you know, it's not really a, it's more of a state of mind. Mexico is more of a state of mind, you know. This is my home. No, this is not your home, sir. You cannot call this place your home. And, and one of the themes in this movie was uh, that he and his wife had a baby that was, that was alive for a short amount of time and then it died. And this death has haunted him and his wife. This baby's born and then it, they, it says it doesn't want to live. It says this world is too messed up. I don't want to live in this world. And so it requests to go back inside of its mother. And that's when you realize, oh, this is not a normal movie. This is a, this is a fantasy, what we're looking at. In this coma-like state that he's in, he sees visions of his his lost son, you know. The child's name was Mateo, and it's like, are you going to let Mateo go? Are you going to stop grieving, you know? But it's this, this theme, like I said, of being caught between two worlds. This world is too much. I don't want to be a part of this world. And so he's identifying his life through the eyes of his son who died, and also through the eyes of his father who has already died. And he has these interesting ideas and conversations throughout the film. Like I said, he argues with his children. He argues with his father. He argues with his old uh, TV co-host that he, that he knew. But what you come to realize in the end is that all of these arguments are really with himself. He's arguing with himself because he's in a coma. And all these thoughts that are happening are him wrestling 
with what was the purpose, right? What was the purpose of his, his life? And did I do something wrong by leaving my country? Am I doing something wrong by living this, this lavish lifestyle? These are things he's struggling with. The nature of an immigrant, once you leave your country for so long, you know that even one thing, you cannot go back. In this movie, you see the shadow of someone in the desert, and they're running, and they're jumping, and they're running, and they're jumping higher and higher until eventually that person's flying. You find out at the end that this is basically Silverio's soul, right? That he's, he's died, and now he's flying to heaven. So you see the same sequence again of this shadow flying over the desert. So it sort of begins and ends with that same thing. This is, this is what I love about artists like in Aritsu, that there's a purpose for everything that you're seeing, even though it seems like at times it's just a bunch of nonsense. ¿Dónde estás? No sé. 